it's uh, give Mississippi uh, College cr credit. They played hard um, and uh, played a bunch of guys, and so a lot of those kids got you know an experience to play in you know in a Division One atmosphere. And, you know, it was kind of fun, obviously, for them. Um, it was this last game that on our schedule that uh, we were able to schedule, um, and um, we just could not get uh, a quality Division One opponent. Uh, that wasn't going to hurt our RPI. So, and you see it around the country, a lot of teams will play a Division II club. Uh, it doesn't count on your RPI. Uh, it doesn't count towards the tournament. It does, it does count on your win-loss record. Uh, so obviously, we played Barry College, we played Indianapolis, we played uh, you know, Brevard, uh, North Alabama when they were Division II. Um, and so we played the Division II schools before. Obviously, they were manned. But it got us an opportunity to work on the inside a little bit. And so both Horace Spencer and Austin Wiley took advantage of the advantages that we had on the inside. And uh, obviously, the, I think an arena record, 66 rebounds, that was positive for us. Um, I thought our defense was, um, uh, we didn't get better tonight as far as the defense assignments. Uh, we weren't fully engaged. I thought of Sylvain, especially in the first half, we didn't share the ball very well. Obviously, didn't shoot it very well. Um, you know, we shot 24% from three, and uh, took some bad shots, took some uh, my turn shots, and didn't make a lot of shots. So that's concerning. What happened after you guys? I mean, they cut it down on 11, 11 points. I don't know if that was lack of individual play or whatever. But what kind of turn that for y'all? I thought the guys coming off the bench. I thought Horace Spencer. Javon McCormick, uh, Malik Dunbar thought they came off the bench in that period and gave us some real effort and energy. Disappointed in the starters, uh, the way they came out in the second half. Um, you mentioned Horace, just to watch him both ends of the court, that energy that he brought. How important is that for this team? I think it's very important. Um, you know, I told my forwards, you know, my inside players, look, you're going to be guarding a guy 6'5 all night. So you got you got to be able to challenge a shot, stay in front of him, and uh, guard guard that matchup. Um, we had mixed results with that, um, and uh, you know the ability to guard and guard your yard and guard your man one on one has a lot to do with the levels that you can play at. And if you can guard your man and keep him in front and not require a lot of help, regardless of the matchup, that's a really good sign. So for the guys that we have on our roster that can do that, that's great. The guys that don't do that very well and require help, um, that just it doesn't bode well for us or them. Did it look like Austin got a little more comfortable tonight? Yeah, we were able to get him uh, uh, 16 minutes. It was 13 the last time, and and, uh, and so it was good. It was good to get him the ball, uh, get him moving. You know, again, shake some of that rust off. Um, you know, the competition in Maui is going to be as good as we'll see all year, all year long. Uh, there are two final four teams in the field, and Duke and Gonzaga. Uh, I, 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 I'd be shocked if those two teams aren't one seats. Be very, very difficult for anybody out west to be a one seat other than Gonzaga. I can't see anybody uh, beating Duke out for the one seat right now. The way they're playing, and uh, there are probably probably at least seven teams that are going to go to the NCAA tournament out of this field, not knowing who won't. But I'm just saying. Uh, we'd like to try to go there and have a successful trip. To do that, we've got to win, we've got to win at least a couple games. That's how I look at it. Um, doesn't matter who, doesn't matter when, doesn't matter in what game. Uh, these are all resume-building opportunities for us to get into the tournament. Important games for the SEC. You start off with a Xavier team that's very deep, very talented, very physical, very athletic. Um, and Wisconsin uh, outplayed them at Xavier last night. And uh, they didn't quit. They made a couple of really big rallies late first half, late second half. Um, but they're probably coming come in pretty angry. Uh, and a lot of things that I thought Wisconsin did, we would also need to do to have a chance to beat them. Um, so that's uh, just an incredible opportunity for, for us.
Bruce, it's been a while since you guys got that invite to Maui. I mean, just how proud and pleased are you with this team and how far you've come since getting that? Well, I think the people at ESPN um, either took me at my word that I would have the program competitive by now or couldn't get anybody else to fill a slot because nobody would want to get in that mix. I don't know which one. Um, but I'm glad we're competitive. Um, you know, Maui, the, the Maui Invitation has got a special place in my heart. 1987-88, uh, which was one of the first two or three years of the event. Um, I was an assistant at Iowa, and we opened up against Stanford, a team that we had just left the year before, or maybe two years before. Um, and then we played Danny Manning in Kansas, the year Danny Manning and Kansas won the national championship. Larry Brown was a coach and won that game. And then we played Roy Massimino in Villanova. And when I was an assistant at Iowa, we won the, the Maui Invitational. And uh, haven't been back since. Um, I scheduled Tennessee to play in that tournament. But unfortunately, I was on my hiatus when they actually went there. So I never, I've never been there as head coach. So it's pretty, it's, 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 listen, it's an honor and a privilege. And I'm grateful for Auburn for giving me the opportunity to coach this team and try to take it out there and see how we stack up against the best programs in the country.